What's up guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at a plugin called MVimTree. So if you're following along with the From Scratch series, then what you're going to want to do is check out the 12 MVimTree branch and you'll have all the same code as me in this video. Alright, so let's get started. Let me show you what MVimTree does. So you can see that I'm in my config directory here. You can see init.lua, license, lua, plugin, so on and so forth. And we're going to do mvim dot in this directory. Dot just essentially means here kind of in, you know, just think when you see dot, just think here for the most part. Um, and now you can see that all of those same files are here, but they're open in NeoVim and more specifically, they're open in mvim tree. All right. So basically this is the tree for the most part so this is one useful thing you can do you can do mvim dot and then it'll open it up in this tree view before netrw would open this uh but you'll see in the, in later on in this video that we actually hijack netrw's uh pretty pretty much we disable and hijack netr netrw and make mvim tree do everything netrw used to do all right, so let's go take a look at what we can do with this. So you can see I can move up and down with H or J and K, right? And I can press enter and open up the folders. I can press enter and open up files. Um, it's treated as a window, like kind of a normal window. So any window commands you have to move in between things, like for instance, I have control H to move left and control L to move right between windows, you'll be able to do that. I also have a key binding you can see here all the way at the bottom uh, for MVim tree toggle and I do leader E to toggle the tree and so my leader key is space so we can just do leader E like that to toggle the tree. You can see more commands that you could map if you do if you go into command mode and do MVim and you can just press enter here you can do MVim tree and probably press tab like this. And there you go, you'll be able to go through all of those. So if we press enter on MVim tree toggle, for instance, there you go, that's what it does. Okay, so something else, let's talk about some useful commit, like things you're gonna be able to do with MVim tree that I think is 90% of the reason um, that you're gonna wanna use it. So if we press A in here, we can add a file. So I'm gonna add a file called asdf.lua. And you can see it just automatically added it right up there. If we wanted to rename it, we could press R on top of it and then come over here and do JKL and there you go. And then if I wanted to delete it, I could press D on top of it. It's gonna ask me if I really wanna remove it and I'm gonna press Y to get rid of it. Um, so those are some quick like keyboard driven uh, ways to interact with creating, deleting and renaming files using your Explorer instead of you know, for instance, in some other text editor, you might have to click around and like right click and do all different other kinds of stuff to uh, do what I just did right there. All right, um, let's take a look at something else. So also let me justify the idea of having an Explorer program when we already have something, for instance, like Telescope. So let's take a look at what Telescope can do. So if I do Telescope and then I do Find Files, right? I can go and find a file, whatever file I guess I'm looking for, but this kind of implies that I already know what's in this project. Um, there'll be a lot of times in your software engineering career where you'll sh you'll open up a brand new project, there'll be a lot of code already there, and you're gonna need to kind of find your bearings, right? I don't think Telescope is necessarily that good for that, um, at least not in its current incarnation. Now, it's really good for finding stuff that you already know the name of. Like if I go and look for plugins, like boom, I can go and find plugins really fast um, without even needing a tree. I can just do something like telescope, find files, and then I can look for whatever I already know exists, right? Um, now the reason that I would want something like a tree is just to kind of get the idea of how the project is structured. So you open up a new project, you don't know where you know, like the, the kind of the conventions and the way that the directory structure is set up and kind of the architecture of the project itself. So this is something that a tree is really, really useful for. So you can kind of, like I said before, get your bearings and explore the project in kind of a more holistic way versus kind of a really quick and targeted way that something like Telescope gives you. So this is why I think having both of them, they, they kind of, they obviously do different things. I have so many people they'll ask me like why would you have this plugin if you already have that plugin it's like well they, they do different things i don't know what to tell you man all right so let's now take a look at how you'll install it and configure it so we're going to go to our plugins here 
and we're gonna take a look at two plugins that we're gonna install. You probably noticed all of these icons here. Uh, that's from MVim Web Dev Icons and a lot of other plugins actually use this plugin as well. This just gives you the ability to show these icons in NeoVim, I guess, and provides these icons, I think. Um, I, I don't exactly know what it does like exactly, but I do know that you'll need it and for MVim tree, something like Bufferline in the future, and there are some other plugins that depend on it as well. Um, another one actually would be like most status line plugins would depend on this as well. All right, so these are the two plugins that I recommend that you install. I'm using Packer here, but you know, install them however you would install them. And let's go take a look at the actual configuration. So now we're in the MVim tree file here. Um, these, and it's a pretty long file, but there's really not a lot here that isn't kind of the default. I just keep the default here just in case, um, some default options here just in case I wanna change them in the future. Uh, these are just our tree icons, so for instance, you can see this icon here, this uh, closed folder, open folder kind of stuff. That's this and this, right? Um, and kind of the get stuff. So like if I come in here, I change this, I save. You can see these dots are for unstaged. And yeah, you can see that's basically what that is there. Um, Let's move on a little bit further. We, like I said, we disable and hijack NetRW, so you won't have the option to do something like Lex, Lexplore or something like that. Um, and the MVim dot thing would have been NetRW otherwise. Open on setup, I'm actually not sure what that does. There are a few settings in here that I really don't know what they do, um, but this is just a config that works for me. There are a lot of settings, so if you really wanna know what every single one does, I'm sure you can read over it, but this this config, I guess, just works for me. Um, ignore file type on setup. These are some file types I don't want MVim tree to uh, open in. So these are kind of dashboard plugins. I'll, if you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. But basically, this is the idea that if you have some file type you don't want MVim tree to open with, uh, most people will probably ignore this. Auto close. So auto close is true. What that means is if I do Q here and I quit this file, what'll happen if, basically if this was false, the tree would stay open and then I could pick something else. But if this was true, and it is true, if I press enter now, um, it'll close this buffer and then it'll also close MVim tree as well since it's the last thing that's open. Um, open on tab, I'm not really sure. Hijack cursor, I think that's just so like you can't move your cursor um, like left and right, but I already have mappings for that. So I don't really, that doesn't really, do anything for me. Um, update current working directory. So basically what this will do is, I'm not 100% sure, and I use this with a project plugin I'll show later, but basically what I assume some of these settings are is if I press enter here, potentially it would update the current working directory to like something like settings or something like that. Um, again, I don't know exactly how each one of these uh, configuration options work. I just know these are the ones that work for me. All right, so diagnostics, I don't know if I showed this yet, but basically you can see that we have the diagnostics over here. You can see that little red X um, and it'll report the worst thing that's happening in this buffer over in the tree. So you can see the little red X here is the worst thing that's happening here. It's an actual error. And so we can see an error over in the tree. Even if we're in some other file, it still holds on and lets us know that this file has an error in it. All right, and uh, yeah, these are just the symbols for that, and this is the way to enable or disable it. Okay, so moving on, uh, Git, we're just enabling Git. Um, view, so this is the width. I don't really know what height would do for me for the most part. I, I've never seen it used like kind of horizontally, but width shows you just kind of how big it is left to right. 30 works for me. Hide root folder, this is the root folder here at the top, so you could hide that if you wanted to. You could put it over to the right if you wanted it over to the right. Um, I think it just looks better on the left and I'm very used to the trees being on the left, so that's where I put it. Uh, let's talk about some mappings. So we can see that we have uh, this tree callback thing here and there's different things you can pass it. If you wanna figure out everything you can do, you should head over to the MVim tree repository and you can look for, I guess, look for callbacks here and look for different ways to map uh, commands. There'll also be a bunch of other, like you can see, like this is not the only, um, like the things that I showed you were not the only things 
that you can do uh, with infantry. I just showed you kind of the ones that I use the most. But yeah, I recommend reading over the readme and finding out if it does something else that you that you really need, I guess. But anyway, so we're mapping L and CR stands for carriage return, which just means enter, right? And so we're mapping L, enter, and O to open up files and directories. So if I press, uh, I guess, enter on this file versus O on this file versus L on this file, they all do the same thing. Um, the other ones in here, whoops, that's key maps. The other ones in here are V, so I can get a vertical split. And then H, because I just find it easy to use H and L next to J and K as I'm kind of navigating this tree. So H will close nodes, L will open nodes, and also open uh, also open files. Okay. Uh, if you're the kind of person that wants like numbers and relative numbers in their tree, you could set that equal to true. Um, that's I, I don't really need that, but you could have that if you wanted it. Quit on open, so I guess if you open up a file and uh, you want the tree to automatically close, that's a setting you might want. This is just Git highlighting and some other things. And this is just showing different icons for things. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, hopefully you find this you know pretty useful. I think this is my favorite kind of tree plugin that exists right now. Um, but there's usually a lot that are out there. This is just kind of the one that I gravitated towards. Okay, so if you're enjoying the From Scratch series, uh, you can sponsor the project over on GitHub or support me over on Patreon. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.